Welcome to Life Devotions. Thank you for joining me today. Husbands, love your wife is the title of this devotion. You know, I have the privilege to be married to my dear Virginia for a little over 40 years now. And I personally find marriage for me a phenomenal school in the school of the perfect love of the Father. I, I tell you, I would not know perhaps his love in the way that he keeps on revealing it in me in the privilege of doing what he said. I've talked to you in earlier devotions, you know, just do what he says. Last week I talked to you about do what Jesus says. And here the scripture shows us the husband's role, and this is part of what I want to talk to you about today. The husband's role to divinely unveil, embody, reveal within that role as a husband, the Christ-like life, the God life that we see in Jesus. And here it says in Ephesians 5.25, Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify, make holy, and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy without blemish. So husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies, he who loves his wife loves himself. No one ever hates his own flesh, but nourishes, cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Now this is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let each one of you in particular so love his own wife as himself, and let the wife see that she respects her husband. Now, the Apostle Paul, of course, in this phenomenal epistle to the Ephesians, is laying out the beauty of Christ and his church and bringing us into the fullness of the life, the fullness of the conscious knowledge of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in which he lives at the Father's right hand. If you ever have somebody ask you, Trinity, is that a word in the Bible? You can say, no, it's not in the Bible, but it's a simple word. Simple word, it just means simply three in one. And you could perfectly see that in Jesus. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are perfectly embodied by him. The fullness of the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are perfectly unveiled in the body of Jesus. Colossians 2 verse 9 and 10 and many other places talk about that. Colossians 1 verse 19, that it pleased God that the fullness of the Godhead should dwell in Jesus bodily. So you see, God has given you a privilege. And I understand that it's so easy because we can be so human in our thinking, so earthly, that all that you can see as your role as a husband is to enjoy your wife and experience her as maybe a good love mate, good friend, good adventurer together, good sports friend. <laughs> Whatever are the combinations that cause you to, to click together and so forth. And while all of these things are all wonderful and good and, and don't hinder anything about God, what is, I think, essential for any of us husbands to see what is it that God really wants from me as a husband. Right? I'm going to talk to you tomorrow what God wants for you, from you as a wife. But today, what does God want from you as a husband? What is he wanting? 
He wants you to love her as Christ loved the church who gave himself for her. You see, this is often the opposite, is that husbands is constantly in their sinful mindset without maybe willfully being sinful, looking for the wife to give herself to you. And you're looking for that and you pull for that, you ask for that, you, you, you entice for that, you try everything to get her to give herself to you. But the Lord says, husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. You see, this is where it starts. Now, how, how can I give myself in love? How did Jesus give himself to us and become like us in every way? He loved us. He says in John 15, verse 9, As the Father has loved me, so I love you. Abide in my love. In the Amplified, it says, Come and abide in the Father's love with me. In this, now if you do what I say, come and abide in my love, you will be you will begin to experience my joy. You will experience the joy I have in my Father's love. And your joy will be full. There is no greater love, he says then in verse 13 of John 15, than to lay down your life. You see, friends, self-sacrificial love is what opens you up to the greatest riches of glory to the greatest joy, satisfaction of God, where you feel His happiness, His satisfaction, that you are learning by daily laying down your life to serve, to become more and more like Jesus, to which you are predestined. You're predestined to be conformed to the image of Jesus Christ. And something that helped me is right here in 1 John chapter 4, starting in verse 16 in the Classic Amplified, the second part of the verse. Listen to this. God is love, and he who dwells and continues in love dwells and continues in God, and God dwells and continues in him. Again, God is love, and he who dwells and continues in love dwells and continues in God, and God dwells and continues in him. In this union and communion with the God, love is brought to completion and attains perfection within us. You see, what God longs for husbands is to embody his love towards that beautiful wife God's given you. He longs for you to embody his love Jesus said in John 13, let's go ahead and, and look it up because it's such a powerful verse there in, in chapter 13, verse 34 and 35. He says, <clears throat> a new commandment I give to you that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. I really believe, friends, that if you follow this, what the Holy Spirit is sharing with you today from the Word of God, you will see things begin to blossom and flourish. You will see God be able to begin to work in you and through you in an unselfish heart, an unadulterated heart a true heart, a sincere heart, an upright heart, a good heart, a forgiving, loving, merciful heart. And you will begin to see that the graces and powers that flow through that loving heart that God is forming in you through His Son, Jesus, He will be able to begin to bless, heal, restore, and beautify your own wife and cause you to enjoy friendship and, and fellowship on a level that is just divine. What this love demands in its nature and character within us is right here in Ephesians chapter 4, 
And it says, let me just read it to you from the classic amplified. I was going to read it from the King James, but I'm going to go ahead and change my mind here. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 20. Hmm. No, I'm going to start at verse 1 of Ephesians, okay? I'm going to go ahead and read it from this. I changed my mind. I therefore, a prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. So this is the characteristic that this love, husbands, this love of the Father demands for you to begin to have in your own relationship with your wife. He says, I beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body, one spirit, as you were called into one hope of your calling. The Lord is faithful, one baptism. Uh, 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 one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. You begin to share through this love, husbands, the oneness that isn't based on preference of foods or exercise or entertainment or whatever. No, a oneness that God begins to give you that begins to bring together two hearts in oneness. It says in Malachi chapter 2, verse 15 through 17, concerning marriage, has he not made them one? Jesus also says in Matthew chapter 19, talking about marriage, what God has made one. You see, and that word oneness is the same word you find in Deuteronomy 6, verse 4. Hear ye, O Israel, the Lord God your God is one. It's the same word. God makes you one. Where, yes, you are very different in many ways, but you're one in spirit. And your differences now become your strength instead of what causes strife and frustration. You begin to serve each other. My right hand, my right hand and my left hand are, are different, but yet they're similar, but they're different. And yet they work perfectly together. And the husband and wife are uniquely different, yet as they become one, it is what God intended. And therefore, I want to come back to where I started husbands. If you want to see that kind of oneness, if you want to see that kind of nature of oneness, then you have to begin to love as Jesus loved. Let me close with you. But what I'm closing with is maybe the most important part of what I'm going to share right now. Look at 1 Peter chapter 2. I'll start at verse 18, which gives reference that you should walk in humility and long sufferance that I read to you from Ephesians 4. Servants, be submissive to your own masters with all fear, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the harsh. For this is commendable. <coughs> if because of conscience towards God, one endures grief, suffering wrongfully. For what credit is it if, when you are beaten for your faults, you take it patiently? But when you do good and suffer, if you take it patiently, this is commendable before God. I am not advocating that you just give yourself to abuse. I'm advocating your heart and attitude, even if things are difficult and painful in your relationship with your spouse. You have to choose what you're gonna be like, no matter what the other person is like. You're gonna have to choose to be like your heavenly father. Jesus represented the father to the disciples he was surrounded with. But those disciples often had arguments and had strife and had attitudes and had all kinds of issues. But that didn't stop Jesus from being who he is. You're going to have to be who you are despite who others are. And he says here, he says, what credit is it when you're beaten for your faults if you take them patiently? But if you do good and suffer, 
if you take it patiently. This is commendable for God. Now here comes husbands. For to this you were called because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow his steps, who committed no sin nor was deceit found in his mouth, who when he was reviled did not revile in return. When he suffered, he didn't threaten. <laughs> but committed himself to him who judges righteously, who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree, that we, having died to sin, might live for righteousness, by whom stripes you are healed. Likewise, verse 7 of chapter 3, husbands, likewise dwell with your wife with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered, so forth and so forth. So listen to this. As you begin to love with the love of your father, that opens it up for God to be able to make you to one in the spirit. And as you then begin to bear by the Holy Spirit, the frailties of, the, uh, of, of your wife. And you begin to take it into prayer before God and begin to thank God for her. This is Christ loving the church, ever living to make intercession for her. Being the high priest who bears with our weaknesses, uh, Hebrews 2, 17, 18, and, and so forth. And, and you begin to live like a priest in your home to fight for the oneness, to maintain the oneness. And you begin to follow Christ's example. And you begin to dwell with your wife with divine understanding, with an ability to show sympathy of heart and care of mind that makes her feel safe with you, that makes her feel God's presence with you. I tell you the truth, the blessings, the favor, the goodness of God. When Virginia and I walk in this, oh my goodness, the anointing that comes, the power that comes, the grace that comes is phenomenal. When we don't walk in it, mercy. And I tell you the truth, I want to live in it every day, in this oneness with her in Christ. I want to love her with his love. I want to dwell with her with the spirit of understanding that there's not conflict, but understanding that there's harmony and communication, that there's acceptance, that well, folks, is that possible? Is that real? By the love of God it is. By the power of God it is. And in the areas where we used to have conflict, God has dealt with it. And the areas where we maybe still need to see more fruit of His divine presence empowering us, I am fully convinced I'll see more than I could have asked for. Now, come on, husbands. Love your wife. Husbands, love your wife. Title of this devotion. Amen. Have a good day.